So the number one topic that gets discussed on the website and the number one issue that we address in the articles and the blog posts that we put up is retirement. I mean, retirement mm -hmm. is the great financial goal, the great financial conundrum. I mean, the hardest thing we will do financially during our lives is to save enough for retirement. The Social Security claiming decision is debated constantly. Really? What's the debate? <laughs> I so, mean, it's so clear because, you know, you'll get 32% more if you wait until to claim when you're the age of 70. So absolutely. I mean, if you delay from say 66 to 70, you will indeed get that extra 32 percentage points of, mm -hmm. of benefit. percent a year, right. But, but people, you know, sit there and say, you know, you know, but what if I don't live long enough to recoup, you know, right. the, the delay and, you know, we are, as we talk about the stock market, we tend to be loss averse. We feel the pain of losses you know, twice as great as the pleasure of gain. So even if it makes financial sense for most people or within a couple, the main breadwinner to delay until age 70 or close to it, a lot of people are inclined to, to claim benefits right away because they hate the idea that they don't and then they have to suffer an early demise. Right. And what I say jokingly to people in response to that is, well, if you delay benefits and you die early in retirement, at least it's not a decision you'll live to regret. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way of putting it. So Jonathan, if there's one investment that we should all have in a long-term diversified portfolio. And one of the nice things about owning the Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund beyond the fact that it's globally diversified, beyond the fact that the expenses are rock bottom is that all this turmoil in the stock market that goes on, emerging markets up, Japan down, US tech stocks getting hit hard, it all disappears from view when you own such a broadly diversified portfolio. Instead, the share price seems to move relatively sedately and you don't see all that turmoil that afflicts individual stocks and individual sectors and this helps people to be much calmer investors and to stick with it for the long haul. And as we all know, if you want to be a successful stock market investor, you got to stick with it for the long haul. What about real estate? So real estate has obviously had a great run in recent years. You know, now because interest rates are going up, it means mortgage rates are going up and we're likely to see some, some softness in the real estate market in the years ahead. You know, one thing we know from history is that when sales start to slow, which they have already done, then prices tend to follow. So we may start to see in the next five or six months some weakness in real estate prices. That said, you know, for most people, owning a house is something they should aspire to do. And for a lot of people at this juncture who got mortgages when rates were below 3%, what's going on right now is actually a pretty good situation. Yeah, they might see some temporary dip in their housing price, but the mortgage they took out was cheap money. And with every tick up in inflation, the hit from making those mortgage payments is reduced. Remember, if, you know, if you've got a $1,000 a month mortgage payment and then your salary is going up with inflation, those mortgage payments are becoming easier and easier to handle. Mm -hmm. So for people who have a reasonable amount of debt, and particularly debt at low rates, the current bout of inflation, it's not a bad thing.